everyone and welcome to episode 30 of the What Not Podcast. My name is Kathy. I am a disabled maker after a car accident in 2007 and this is a podcast about all the crafty things that I get up to. So if you like a bit of knitting, a bit of sewing, embroidery, uh, painting, any type of craft, anything and everything that I can get my hands on, I'll have a go at. So if that's what you like, you're in the right place. And as you can see, Buddy is not in his usual spot and he's not happy about it. He's sitting next to me here shooting daggers. But I thought I would introduce our new addition to the family. And this little guy is a, he's supposed to be a purebred chihuahua, but he's not. Look at the length of those legs. He's not a purebred chihuahua. Um, I'd say he's a COVID baby. I, I think that he was possibly purchased during COVID and then people decided, mm, no, too much. So we've ended up with him. He's 11 months old. His name was, and I don't want to confuse him, so I'm going to spell it. His name was J-A-S-P-E-R. But we have changed it to Dobby because he looks like Dobby from Harry Potter. Uh, we were tossing around a few names, but that's what's in, that's what's stuck. And as you can see, he loves a cuddle, absolutely loves a cuddle. Uh, he would sit there all day and let me cuddle him, uh, which is really impacting on my crafting. <laughs> But what happened was last fortnight when Susan and I were filming, uh, my husband was messaging me and because we were filming, I thought I'll ring him when we're finished. And finally he sent through urgent. So I said to Susan, well, I better give him a call. So I gave him a call and he said that uh, this agency were trying to contact uh, us so that we they could organise for us to have a meet and greet with this little guy which my husband and I went down on Sunday. So it was a three and a half hour drive there and a three and a half hour drive back, but he's worth it. He's very good. He's fit in pretty well. We had a few problems in the beginning because he actually uh, attacked Rusty twice. Yep. This guy weighs about four kilos. Rusty weighs about 60 kilos. Rusty was terrified of him. And... I will tell you that before we got Rusty, I'm pretty sure that he has been attacked by other dogs at some point. He's got a lot of scars on his front legs and his chest. Uh, and I would say that he has probably got some bad memories associated with that. So poor old Rusty, he was hiding under the clothesline. He wouldn't come out. I go in the pool every day and give him two super dupers. He wouldn't eat his super dupers. I usually give him a brush every day. He didn't want me to brush him. Um, and I said to my husband, I'm a bit worried if this doesn't uh, change, then Dobby will have to go because Rusty wasn't going anywhere. So I had a chat with Rusty the day, I, one day I got in the pool and he came over and I gave him a good old pat. And in the meantime, Dobby had been trying to give him a little lick and a kiss and snuggle into him. Rusty wasn't having a bar of it. Um, but I said to Rusty, you know, I think he's sorry. Maybe you could give him another chance. And the next day, Rusty came good. And they have been having great fun running around and playing in the backyard. Uh, Rusty, <laughs> look at him. He's so cute. He's trying really hard to fit in. He, we were told he was house trained. He's not. We're lucky, though, because we have tiles throughout the whole house. We don't have carpet. So he has had a few accidents, which have been pretty easy to clean up. But he's getting the idea because none of the other dogs pee in the house. Uh, I took him around to see Mum last on Monday, disgraced himself and pooped in her dining room. Luckily, she also has tiles throughout her house, so... I didn't clean that up, so hopefully mum got someone to clean that up. Um, but he's he's been a very good boy. He's already learned how to sit, and we're working on shake. But, yeah, 
So that's Dobby, and he's the new guy. He's the new kid on the block, and he's settling in pretty well. So, yep. All right, Dobby, you can hop off. And when Buddy's just gone outside, when he comes back in, he can hop back in his position. Otherwise, I don't want any problems with dogs getting upset about. You ready to come back up, mate? Come on. Come on. So, yeah. That's your spot, isn't it, during the podcast? That's where you hang out. What was your brother doing up there? Not acceptable, is it? It's all right. You're back on deck now. All right, so that's Dobby. And, yeah, we're pretty happy and pretty excited. And, as I said, he's fitting in pretty well at this stage. So all good there. Now, next up, I can hear, hear them running around now. Rusty just ran in because they're playing together again. So nice. Anyway, uh, for all the people that aren't interested in dogs or what's happening in my life, I'm sorry, I normally put that on the end, but I just wanted to introduce Dobby. So let's get into it. So first of all, a big thank you to Susan for coming on the podcast last fortnight and a big thank you to everybody who said such lovely things of encouragement. She did a great job. Uh, you know, I'm used to doing this by myself, so it was a bit of a, a learning curve for both of us. And I can tell you right now, it was a marathon editing job, but I got there in the end. Um, and hopefully Susan will come back on another time. Her circumstances have changed. She's just got a full-time job, so... Uh, it might be a little ways down the track, but we'll see what we can do about getting Susan back on. Maybe the next time she's got a new yarn release, she can come and show it to us. So that's that. Now, I Susan talked about the advents. We, well, we both talked about the advents on the last podcast. And I want to say thank you to everybody that raced over and bought one on the Friday when we released them. It was more than we expected. And we were so grateful. Uh, we were a bit surprised. We only sort of put out 10 of the deluxe boxes and the rest were sort of standard. We were expecting people to go for the standard boxes. You guys all went for the deluxe boxes. So Susan swapped some of the standards to deluxe. And now we've got our work cut out filling those boxes because we were only expecting to sort of make 10 of this and 10 of that. And now we're making 30 of this and 30 of that. So... Uh, but that's all right. And our Etsy sellers that we've got lined up to put in special treats, um, I've messaged them and Susan's made contact with her people. So nobody is going to miss out. Uh, there are three boxes left. So if you think you've missed out, there's still three boxes. There's two standard and one deluxe. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, I'll put Susan's website in the drop down box and you can just click on that and get straight over there and pick one of those up so yeah thanks everyone for that uh the last thing in the beginning section here is what i'm wearing i've got my oxycan rose on and i love it it's it's cooling down here it's not freezing cold yet but it's just it's just a little chill in the air uh, so I thought I would um, pop that on and it's got the cotton in it so it's not too hot. I feel quite comfortable even though it's a medium warm day. And my t-shirt here says, let the good times roll. So yeah, I really like this jumper and it fits me really well. The only thing is maybe I should have made it an inch longer. I mean, it sits on my hips, but maybe an inch longer. But no, I'm getting away with it. I feel pretty happy. All right, let's get into some finished objects. And for my longtime viewers, I know this is dragging on. I am going to wind it up uh, pretty soon. Is my friends are like flowers, sure. If you can hear a little bit of barking in the background, I can hear them tearing around like a pair of crazies. So they're running back and forth, having a good time. And that's okay. That's what I want them to do. Uh, I have finished my second Friends Are Like Flowers shawl. So it's all done. All finished. 
looks great, I think, even if I do say so myself. Uh, a few of you, I said I was a bit worried about the colours and a few of you were thought the colours would suit me very well. So, um, yeah, I washed it. This shawl really comes into its own once you wash and block it. So, yeah, uh, I've tried to make the pattern as detailed as I possibly can. Um, a couple of things to note is the make sure you keep your edge loose if you do knit this. I am hoping to have this out pretty soon. As I said, I'm all finished. I've finished my typing it all in. Uh, I've got all my photos done. Mills just got to upload them onto the pattern. And then I'm really just waiting for one of the test knitters to finish knitting it completely through so that they can pick up any little bits and pieces that are in the last sections. And once either Julia or Nicole finish the shawl, I will be ready and raring to go. Uh, Susan, I'm going to give this to Susan along with my other one, the original one that I knit. And lovely Susan is going to get some photos for me. So, yeah, all finished. Oh, I keep looking at it on the monitor. It looks so delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm very happy with it. I'm glad it's over. Um, but I am working on the secret pattern for the advents now. So that will be taking up a bit of my knitting time. So I might not have as much knitting things to show you on the next uh, couple of podcasts because I will be working on that. Um, and God love her, Julia. <laughs> Even after all of the knitting, all of this for me, she has said that she will test knit my advent pattern. So you're the greatest, Julia. And she's an excellent tester. If anybody's looking for a good test tester, she uh, doesn't hold back. She tells you exactly what she thinks. And that's what I want to hear. I want to know what the problem is or if something's good. She tells you as it is. So thanks, Julia. So, yeah, that's done. And I wanted to just say, like, last fortnight when we were talking about this pattern uh, and about using the sock yarn, I wanted to give you some alternatives. So I've dragged a couple of things out of my stash that I thought would also suit knitting this pattern. So this is from Oz Farmer's Market, and this is like a gradient. So if you had something like that in your stash, I think that would suit this shawl pattern quite well. Uh, another thing that I've had on a commercial basis is something like this yarn here. If you've got something like that, that's just got a bit of variation in it, because my suggestion is the other colors are solids or semi-solids. So this is a Zorba ball. Um, something like that would be ideal in it. Or did I pick one more? Oh, yes, I did. Or even if you want something with a bit more punch that's not as expensive as the indie dyed yarn, say something like this, this sort of thing with a bit of a bit of color in it, and then your other three colors would be more neutral tones. So with mine, what I had left, and I have written. Um, I've added about 15 grams, but in the pattern I've specified exactly how much yarn that I've used so that if you didn't have a full skein of something, you could weigh it and see if you thought it would be enough in your stash. But I had that much of my sock yarn left. So I got the pattern out easily. And these were my um, three other colors. Let's see if I can grab that. And that's how much of those I've had I had left. So yeah, I got it out of the um, four skeins easily. So yeah. So that's my friends are like flowers shawl. It's all finished. It is moments away for all of you that are keen to knit it, which I'm so excited to see how, how I've gone with the pattern in the end. Uh, I've tried my hardest and I am hoping that it's going to be good for everybody. OK, 
Okay, and my next finished object is one that I showed you on the podcast last fortnight. And I wasn't 100% happy with the kit that I got, so I've got a few things to say about that. So this is the kit that I got, and I bought this off Etsy from a place called Wonderland Ukraine on Etsy. And it's really cute and everything. And I finished it. So it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be, for one, but that's not a bad thing. So that's it. Uh, it's really nice. It looks really nice. As I said, it's a bit bigger than I thought. So on the back of my hand, um, it's about, mm, about a bit larger than a 50 cent coin. But my problem with this was I ran out of beads. Uh, I didn't lose any. I had them on my desk. So I don't know what happened, but I ran out of the white background beads. And what I ended up doing is because I went out with the ladies for coffee last week. So I popped into Spotlight to pick up some matching beads, which I couldn't get, of course. So I've had to use white beads and I'll just show you closely. So what I tried to do was dot them around so that it sort of incorporated it because what I'd done was I sort of worked from the outside in, which left a big gap in the centre there where I would have to put all the white beads. So I had to sort of try and pull some out and disperse them around so it sort of looked cohesive. So uh, it doesn't happen too often where you get a kit that doesn't have enough stuff in it. Normally with kits you have more than you need. So it was a bit annoying. And because I was trying to match the beads, I ended up having to spend about $20 buying different beads to try and match it. Uh, yeah, so I was not happy about that. Uh, but apart from that, it all went together pretty well. And what I did that wasn't included in the pattern is I felt like it was a bit flimsy. So I cut out a piece of cardboard and sandwiched it in between the felt so you put that felt backing on and the front. Uh, so I sandwiched a piece of cardboard in there and that's made it really stable. So, yeah, that's a finished object. I'm happy with it now, but I was pretty annoyed when I ran out of the beads. Uh, yeah, but I paid uh, 28 Australian dollars for that. So that was that one. So that's finished and I'm happy with it. And the last thing that I have finished was my silk scarf. Let me tell you where I got that from. I got that from Bombed Yards, Bombed Yarns on Etsy. And it was a kit that you use uh, like dried flowers and herbs and things like that. And I use that use the dried flowers and I felt like there wasn't I was I got some strawberry tea off my brother-in-law he lives in Sweden for Christmas and it had a lot of like strawberries and roses that were that pinky color so I sprinkled some of that on as well to see if I could get a bit of the pinky color out but it didn't it just stayed with the yellows there seem to be a lot of um, chamomile flowers in the pack that I got with this. Uh, I mean, it's very, very beautiful. Uh, I didn't, well, I didn't iron it. I liked the crushed look of it. So when I had Susan on, so she suggested that I use my stamps, which I did. Had a bit of a play around. Had a bit of a muck up actually because. Um, I used, where is it? There it is. I used like a blacky brown ink and it was too dark. So I didn't, that section there has got like a very dark flower on it, which I wasn't mad keen on. But I used my stencils and things at the back. For the background there, you can see I've put on some russet and greens colours and just in this section, there's some flowers and things like that that are in the background and as I worked out my stamps and used a lighter hand I think that this section 
looks much better when I started to work out. Um, I probably should have done it on a test thing first, but I didn't. Uh, but I worked out that the lighter brown colour looked a bit more subdued with this fabric and everything. But it's very long, so I could always cut that end section off and hem it. I probably won't, but I could. Uh, and what you have to do is... As Susan said, you lay all the, the petals and things out on the fabric, which you've soaked, I soaked mine overnight, just in water, and then you roll it up really tightly and wrap it up with string like you would for tie-dye, and you put it in a pot and you boil it for an hour, or simmer it for an hour. So I set that all up, and I had it simmering, and I went in the pool for an hour, so that was nice, and when I got out, it was just simmering nicely, and the next step said to turn it off and let it cool overnight. And I thought, all right, well, just to make sure the water's really hot, I'll turn it up, up till it boils, just just boils, uh, and then I'll turn it off. So I went and made myself a cup of tea, came into the craft room, got sidetracked, and I was in the craft room and I thought, I heard like a crack and I thought, no, oh, what was that? And then I remembered that I'd turned the pot on and it had boiled dry. So I did burn it. I did burn it um, just on that section. And it was only, I caught it just in time, but it was just that little bit there. But it's kind of, it looks kind of like it's meant to be. Uh, so I was thinking about just trimming that off and hemming it, but it's all right. It's fine. And yeah. So yeah. Don't get sidetracked if you decide to do something like that. But, I, yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's really nice. It's soft. It was fun to do. It was a good kit. And, yeah, pretty nice. Let me see. I'll put it on. So, actually, it's a really nice, because it's silk, it's really nice for this. Queensland weather. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So, yep, that was a finished object. All done. So, very happy with that. Now, the next thing that I've got in terms of finished objects is my watercolours. So, I have been working on a few secret projects, so I can't show you those. But I have got a couple to show you. And during the week, I was running a bit short of time. So I thought, I'm just going to freehand a few flowers. So I put a reel up on Etsy of me painting these. And I just freehanded these just on a whim one day. So the colours look a little bit orange. In real life, they're more terracotta colour. But, yep, did that one, and I did a few of those. I did um, a couple of different ones because I was enjoying doing those. So there's a, a reddish, reddish purple one. I did that one, freehanded those. It's just a nice little exercise to do just to keep your wrist loose when you're painting so that you can get some nice effects. Can't show you those two. Can show you this one. So this was a um, Da Vinci eye that I did. So I'll put him over this side and I'll put the corresponding picture. I was happy with how he turned out. Um, I might just turn the colour down a little bit and see if just for the sake of showing this, these two pictures. Yeah, that's a bit better. So that's more accurate to colour. And I'll put the corresponding picture beside it. But the thing I liked the most about this little guy was his feet. His little chubby, chubby paws and feet. So, yep. Painted that guy. And I have got a couple of commission paintings that are dogs that I am going to be doing. 
that's on my list of things. And the last one that I did was this guy and I painted this on the 26th. So I'll put the corresponding picture beside it. And it's just a, let me get it right, right there. It's, it's a cat's face, but not the full face because I really wanted to focus in getting as much detail as I could in those eyes to make them look almost three-dimensional. So, yep, painted that guy. So they're my paintings for this week. And the only other thing I've got to show you, in, and it was just a bit of a fiddle around, I bought this little round watercolour pad, which is quite cute. And so I just had a bit of a fiddle last night um, painting on a round little, small little round pocket canvas. So, yeah, bit of fun. And there will be a painting tutorial at the end of this video. Let me just turn that brightness up a bit. Bigger. So uh, we are painting autumn leaves. I can't show it to you because I haven't painted them yet. Uh, normally I would paint them the day before today so that I can show you what we're going to paint on the podcast, but I didn't do it yesterday. So that's on my hit list for either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. So I can put it on the end of this video, but that'll be a surprise. So I know that a few of you are enjoying the painting tutorials and uh, one of the ladies that is enjoying the painting has requested autumn leaves, which is appropriate because we're heading into autumn if we're not already in autumn anyway. So autumn leaves is what will be on the end of this video. All right, hopefully the lighting's okay. I've got the sun going in and out a bit today as usual. At least it's not raining this week. Um, I've got a passion fruit vine just outside this window and it's going crazy. And this morning when I came in, the very first passion fruit flower has opened. And I'll get a photo of that hopefully and put it on the intro because passion fruit flowers are stunning. So yeah, anyway, so what are my whips that I'm working on? So I've only got two whips. Uh, I am going to be having a new cast on. In fact, I'm thinking about casting on two new things shortly. So the first thing that I'm working on, and it's from the same place that I got the brooch. I should have this finished by next week. I was trying to finish it by for you this week, but it uh, didn't happen. But that's okay. So it's a little pin cushion and it's really pretty. I'm actually really enjoying making it. Uh, it's a bit fiddly, but that's that's half the fun. And I think it's turning out quite well. So you basically have this piece of timber and it's got little holes in it. There is a pattern that goes with it. So you follow the corresponding pattern and you just work your way across row by row following the pattern with the beads and sewing them in. I've got my thread attached here. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm working on that and really enjoying it. Hopefully that's in focus. And that stands on the pin cushion, but I will show you the whole finished thing next week. I am making a reel of me making this. I like making the reels actually. Um, I've got a few there now, but uh, I like making, um, I'm, I'm enjoying making this and I will have the finished one to show you. And as I said, hopefully the reel will be on my Instagram so you can have a little look at the pro progress in a very short period of time. So they are my only whips. Yeah, that's all I've got. So as I said, I, I am hoping to cast on two new things, which I'll talk about shortly. But, uh, oh, my other whip, didn't tell you about that, is Mills de Shane. So I have completely finished the body and I'm about to cast on the, let me see, there it is. I'm about to cast on the sleeves, but I, I've i run out, I've only got that much of this um, 
Cascade 220 left. So I have put in an order for two more skeins. I don't think I'll need two more, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. Uh, and I'm waiting for that to turn up. I'll start the sleeve using this little bit, but I don't think I'm going to get very far. I did order it. I realized I was going to run out about two weeks ago. So I ordered about two weeks ago, but postage from overseas at the moment takes ages. So we'll see. But I've shown that to you before. That is the main colour. And I'm holding it, which is a yarn collective in russet. And I'm holding it together with that. This one, this one is eight ply. This one is four ply. So because it's such a high uh, thickness yarn, it's knitting up really quickly. And you're also knitting it on large needles. But the other, I like the bottom of this because instead of just doing the plain rib for the bottom, it's got this nice, um, I don't know if it'll show up very well. Instead of the rib, it's got like a drop stitch border on it, which is nice. But I really like this yarn collective. It gives you such nice stitch definition and tension and it's a really soft yarn. Um, I've got quite a bit of it in my stash. I think I bought some enough for a jumper quantity in every colour because there's a nice, a really nice, uh, a peachy burgundy, uh, not peachy, a pinky burgundy colour that I've got there that I was going to knit some. I'll show that one time on my Ravelry Revealed, no doubt. But uh, yeah, so I think Mill is going to love this. And. If the yarn turns up, I'm hoping that'll be finished in two weeks because the sleeves will take, because it's a drop sleeve, you don't have to knit the whole length of the yarn. You're sort of knitting from about that point down. So that should take no time at all. Yes, that's all my whips done. All right, so the next section is Ravelry Revealed. And... I have dragged out some yarn that I purchased and I'll lean to this side so I can show you the pattern. The pattern is called, let me just put my glasses on, is called the Winnie Pullover. So that was what I was going to knit with this yarn and I still like it and I probably still would. Uh, the only thing that is kind of putting me off, in, and this is the yarn that I've got here, that I've purchased, and I've got the enough to knit that whole jumper. I like the jumper because it's kind of soft, and I think it would be comfortable to wear, not too heavy, uh, and yeah, nice. It's uh, the jumper. It will. It's more like a. Um, a, a short sleeve sweat tee type of arrangement but it takes five ply and this is a four ply and this is a I'll tell you what's got in it 45% wool 35% silk and 20% nylon and it is an Elizabeth Laboid designers silk designers choice silky wool and it doesn't have a colorway on it. It just says color 56, but it's a really nice, and I don't know why, but this camera doesn't seem to pick up the reds very well. It's kind of blowing that out and making it look almost tomato red, whereas in real life, it's more what I would call a burgundy red. Actually holding it back here, maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit more accurate. So, in the pattern, as I said, it's five ply and you're supposed to hold it together with something. So I thought I'll hold it together with a bit of mohair. And I bought some mohair online that I thought was going to be a similar colour to this. It's not. And when it turned up, I was a bit overwhelmed thinking, uh, I'm not sure how that's going to look. And this is what turned up. So it's what I would actually classify as a coral red. It's really bright, really bright. Um, it is Amsterdam Kid Silk. That's the brand. 
it's really soft and I thought about it I thought uh, I thought about unraveling this and skeining it up and over dyeing it uh, but I'm not sure and then I thought you know what this color would tone it down maybe I'm overreacting uh, maybe it would be fine if they were together what do you think tell me if you think that they that this cut if whether this color would tone down this color and that the top would look all right in those colors but I don't have many red tops I used to wear a lot of red when I was younger and people used to say it looked nice on me so um I'd still like to knit that top with this yarn this feels a little rustic actually uh, a little tiny considering it's got silk in it it has got a little bit of a toothiness to it but um, I think it would knit up nicely it's a very thin four ply I'll tell you that so yeah it'll be interesting to see if I got gauge like I was going to gauge swatch but anyway I mean it's a loose fitting top I won't be gauge swatching but yeah it seems to be a fairly size inclusive pattern because the largest size goes up to 60 inch bust so yeah see what you think what do you think all oh, the sun's starting to come in because I waited a bit later today to film <laughs> after last fortnight's filming effort with the postie and the courier guys coming and everything I thought I'm gonna wait till all of those people have been and they have been uh, before I start filming today so it's much later in the day than I normally film and now the sun's coming in <laughs> oh well it's nice to have a bit of sunlight so that's my revelry revealed now as far as what I'm going to cast on next uh, I have decided I showed this on episode 28 and it is my Debbie Bliss fine dongle yarn and I I'm pretty sure I'm going to cast on my gamma because I love this yarn I love the look of it I love the color of it uh, that top that I showed you which I'll re I'll put it up here again the gamma I have been wanting to knit that for probably two years so I'm doing it I'm doing it uh, I'm going to cast that on and that's that's what I'm going to use so yep that's going to happen and the other thing that I plan on casting is uh, casting on is my beagle, uh, which was the pattern I talked about last fortnight's podcast that I'd bought the yarn for. So I am planning on casting him on as well. So I'll put a little picture in here just to refresh your memory. So that's that. And I think the next section is the for me from me. So for, you, for those of you that don't watch that section, you're probably bailing out just before these light spots hit my face. <laughs> so that's all right. Um, yep, yeah, we're cooling down a bit. Thank, thankfully, it's not too cool. I don't like it when it's too cool. It makes all my aches and pains come out, as I think most people find. Uh, as far as getting cool in Queensland, it never gets that cool, but... Uh, yep it'll be okay it'll be okay I've got heaters everywhere in this house so I am never cold uh, the other news is my husband's work circumstances have changed a bit so he's going to be home for the better for, uh, much more often so I'm looking forward to that although he's a little unwell at the moment so he's off to get some chest x-rays and things like that so I hope that's all going to be fine uh, but other than that no big news apart from Dobby's arrival which I already love him so much <laughs> but uh, yeah so as I said for those of you that don't like to join me for the for me from me thanks for popping in uh, at, if you want to skip forward after the for me from me I am going to mention some Australian podcasters that you might like to check out I thought each episode uh, I will find two new Australian podcasters and I will let you guys know about them. After Susan's comments on the last podcast, a lot of you contacted me and said that you would like to find some 
new Aussie podcasters. So I'm on the hunt. So if you're an Aussie pod podcaster and you'd like a shout out on my little corner of the internet here, please contact me and I will be happy to do so. So for the rest of us, let's see what I've been buying. Not too much, but I have got a couple of things, a couple of gifts as well. It's a great, it's a, it's going to be a race against the sunspots. <laughs> and Rusty's here. He normally gets his dinner at half past four and it's half past three. And he normally starts nagging me at half past three for his dinner. Do you want to come and say hello? Come here. Come on. Oh, you're a good boy. He wants his dinner. You want to say it out loud because he knows the word. Don't you? Hey, you're a good boy. You got the sunspots. Okay, up off, up off. Good, good guy, good guy. All right. So, for me, from me, I got a lovely package in the mail from my beautiful daughter Mill. P.S. If you haven't checked out her Etsy store and her fantastic stickers, you should. I know a lot of you have. And uh, I appreciate you guys going over there and supporting her. That means so much to me as well as to her. So, yep, I'll put Mill's link below if you want to go and check out her stickers that we talked about. I know there's not many left. She's in the process of some new designs. So um, hopefully when they come through, I can show them to you as well. But she sent me an early Mother's Day gift because she couldn't wait to send it to me. And I don't blame her. She made me this guy, which Dobby would love to get his hands on this bee. It's made of crochet. I don't know what the yarn is that Mills used, but it is so soft, like velvety soft. And look how cute that guy is. So adorable. So I love it. I love it a lot. And anything handmade, I'm all about. Like if somebody takes the time and effort to make you something, they've thought about you while you're making it. Like it, it's so special. So thanks, Mill. I love him. He's beautiful. And the other little thing that she put in the parcel was a very special thing. And I've been coveting these for a while. I'm hoping that I can show them to you in a way that does them justice. But these are made by a lovely artist on Etsy and her name is Winnie and I will put her details below. She's Winnie Marie Anderson on Etsy and she's in America and the reason I haven't purchased these is because the postage is ridiculous but Mill gave me the, actually I'll show you them one at a time so I can so it's a stitch marker and it's a little black lady well she's a lighter color black lady but she's a black lady and Whitney is a black lady so they she really focuses in on these sorts of things but the special thing about this is in the sunlight this little stitch marker's hair changes color and Whitney on her Instagram shows pictures of this happening I actually had them on my bedside table and the sun was coming in and their hair was changing colors so yeah they're really clever she makes all of these by hand with so much detail she's got some lovely ones at the moment that have got some beautiful flowers in their hair they're so cute the detail is unbelievable and Whitney makes these whilst having a family, like this is her full-time job, I believe. She's a beautiful lady and she does such a lovely job. So thanks, Mill. I feel so special having some of Whitney's stitch markers and I think they are lovely. So, yep, pretty excited about that. Uh, Whitney likes to have a positive representation of black people. That's her her logo on her Instagram so go and check Whitney's Instagram out if uh, if you're interested 
I know she was mentioned a little while ago on the Grocery Girls. Whitney and I have been following each other for probably two years. And we had the odd chat here or there. Not not a lot, not as much as I do with other people, but uh, she's probably busy. She's too busy for me. That's all right. <laughs> not too busy for me. I know she's not too busy for me, but um, she's a busy lady. Now, the other thing that I got as a gift was off my mum. And she knows that I love these old kids' books. Uh, we used to have a whole heap of little golden books as children. And I've asked my, my sister. She's usually the keeper of all nostalgic things in our family. And I asked my sister if she had the uh, little gold, any of the little golden books, and she didn't. So I don't know what happened to them, but I would have liked a couple of those. But mum found this book in her bits and pieces when she was cleaning up the other day. And it's a very, very old. It's a book that mum was given as a gift, a birthday present. And in the cover, it I think I've told you guys before, my mum's name is Joy. So it's got her name in the cover there. It's probably a bit faded to show you, but it says, To Joy with best wishes from Auntie Doll and Uncle Ellen, not Christmas 1945. So this book is super old, but the thing that I like about it, and I'll show you, the illustrations are cute and everything. That's that's one of the illustrations in the book. It's actually falling apart. I've got to be very careful with it. That's the illustration. But the thing I like about it is if you look at the writing, the print, it looks like somebody has actually handwritten this book. They haven't. It's printed on the pages. But it's like the old copper pl plate and it's it looks like it's been handwritten. But beautiful pictures in it. Such nice colours, vibrant colours. I just, yeah, thanks mum. I really, really like it. I, I find this sort of stuff quite creatively inspiring. In fact, this page was just the outline and I would say that mum, she, used, she loves colouring in even now, um, has coloured that in as a child. How adorable is that? So that was just an outline sketch and mum's coloured that one in. Uh, I don't know how old mum would have been in 1945. I'm not good at maths and I can't work it out quickly on the spot, but uh, I don't think she would have been very old in those days. Look at that pink spotty elephant. How cute is he? And there's the pig dolls meeting the, the queen, king and queen. So, yeah, a lovely book and I really like it. So thanks, mum. That was another acquisition and a couple of kits that I've bought um, I found this on the discount table at uh, the reject shop and I thought I'm gonna give that a go I don't know if, what I'll whether I'll do exactly what the kit says but it's pouring art uh, I don't know what that means I don't know what I'm supposed to do until I open it looking at the back of it it looks like you put a stencil on the canvas and then you pour the paint over the canvas somehow to get a marbling effect. But it's got the paint, paint brushes, it's got some glitter sachets in there. I don't know whether I'll use the glitter sachets. It's got some half pearl by Monty's. You can see them positioned on the canvas just there. So I'm not quite sure what I'll end up with. I don't know if I'll do the mermaid. I might do my own thing. I've got some very nice stencils. I might go more, um, you know, with flowers and leaves instead of a mermaid. We'll see. And I've got a few little canvases there. So I might pull them out and have a go with the leftovers. I've been watching a lady on YouTube and she actually does this kind of thing. I actually watched it after I purchased the kit and she puts the colours on and then puts the whitewash and then she uses a balloon and a, a straw to paint and move the paint around and she gets some beautiful effects. I will link her YouTube below if you want to go and have a look at her. But 
it's mesmerizing what she does with these canvases uh, so let's see if I can be mesmerizing with my canvas but I'll do that this week and I'll show it to you next week and the last little kit that I bought is this guy and I forgot that I bought this and what I do is I buy bits and pieces and I've got a little trolley you can just see one here I've got two of these Ikea trolleys one is a bit further in and whenever I buy anything and it comes in I put it in the trolley and then when it comes to podcasting time I fossick through it and find something that um, I think might be interesting to show you so I I think I've, I've only got two more things in there that I've purchased recently but I don't want to overwhelm you with too much stuff so I just stick them in the trolley and drag something out every so often so this is one that I'd forgotten I'd purchased and when I was going through I found it and I bought it online from a place called On A String in Australia and this is a necklace apparently I'm into the jewellery making lately um, to make this beautiful necklace this was pricey I will say but you know what if you bought a commercial necklace in the shops that's expensive anyway as well so this way there was a chocolate in here which I opened it and as I say I actually went back through to see when I purchased this on Etsy and it was probably middle of January when I purchased it and when I opened it today I was like oh there's a chocolate in here I wonder if that's off I don't care I'm eating it so that's gone um, and it wasn't off it was nice <laughs> Uh, so it came in this nice pink box all done up with a nice little sticker and everything and I've got the it's all bagged up and I'm not going to pull it apart I will show it to you I'll get her card out so I'll just pause while I get her card out so I don't make too much racket so it came with this nice little card and it says that uh, on my next purchase I would be uh, entitled to get 10% off if I bought something else out of her shop so that's quite nice and I've just about made a mess but I think I saved it it in the bag was all these little um, glittery things so yep managed to contain those and it came with a magnet, one of her, like her business card on a magnet. She does lots of nice things, actually. There was a few there that I thought, um, when I went back and had a look at her store today, just have a look. She's in Australia. She's got a lot of sales, but um, she obviously has this down, packing these things down, Pat. But look at the colour of those beads. Aren't they pretty? like lavenders and dusty pinks and silver so quite nice so yep gonna have a crack at that it's got that long that long ceramic bit there in there too so we'll see how that all comes together so that should be a bit of fun Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about was two Australian podcasters. So this last week, the lovely Alexandra of Fiberbound uh, not only mentioned me, but mentioned Mill on her podcast. And uh, I appreciate that so much, Alexandra. It was very nice of you. If you haven't, I know there's a couple of new subscribers that have come over from her channel, so welcome to you guys. But if you haven't seen Fiberbound's podcast, definitely go over and check it out. She's got a lovely aesthetic. She does some beautiful knitting. Uh, I don't knit many socks, but she's picked up that uh, my slack there. She, she knits socks, a lot of socks. So if you like sock knitting, go and check out Alexandra. She does a lot of test knitting. She does some beautiful test knitting. Uh, so, yeah, she's got a lovely podcast. She uploads regularly, and I will link her details below. Uh, she also has an Instagram, which she fills with beautiful things of not just uh, her knitting, but she 
shows little bits of her life and her family. So uh, go and check out her Instagram as well. So that's Alexandra. And the other person that I subscribe to on YouTube and have watched a lot of her podcasts is Passion Flower. And she is on a farm and she's gradually getting it all set up for herself with uh, her dye studio. Uh, she's, she's taken us on the journey of how she set that up how she's done her little garden outside her dye studio. So not only does she talk about knitting and yarn and yarn dyeing, she talks about her life on the farm and what's going on there and what they're up to. So it's a really holistic podcast. She covers a lot of areas and there's a lot of things that are of interest for people that aren't just interested in the yarn. So uh, if you're looking for another podcast that's well worth checking out, uh, that is Passion Flower, and I will link her down below. She also has a great Instagram, so I will link her Instagram as well. So if you are looking for some new Australian podcasters, go and check them out. And I think that's about it. When I, when I get everything ready, I pile it all up here. And then as I talk to you, I move it across. So that desk is now piled high and this one's almost clear. So then I know I'm done. So yeah, that's the podcast this week. Everybody's fallen asleep on the floor, even rusty, even though it's getting close to. If I said that out loud, he'd go crazy. Um, <laughs> nearly got away with it. It's the only barking that we've had in the whole podcast. <laughs> Good on your buddy. Um, I went and had a visit with mum. She is really well. And uh, as I said, Dobby came with me for the visit. He totally disgraced himself because he had a, a poop in her dining room. Luckily, mum has tiles throughout her house as well. So hopefully it was an easy clean up. I didn't clean it up. I'm ashamed to say, but I, um, uh, I'm sure somebody cleaned it up. So if you did Bob or Tess, thanks for that. <laughs> That's my brother and sister that visit mum regularly. So no doubt uh, one of them had to do that job. But I'm hoping to get his toilet training issues under control pretty quickly. He's very smart and seems to be learning pretty quickly. So I think that's about it. I have got the painting tutorial. There won't be any bloopers this week because it's been fairly smooth sailing, thank goodness. But yeah, all is well in my world. I hope all is well in your world. I hope you're all well and getting lots of crafting done. And I'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye. I'm driving down an empty freeway No waiting for the light to change I'm seeing the sunrise behind Okay, so today we are going to paint some autumn leaves as requested. Uh, I've got a couple of suggestions for you here. As you can see on my page, I've just randomly drawn some autumn leaves. I will put a link in the down box to some templates that you could use to do this. If you've got some um, children's books or colouring books or things like that, they might have some autumn leaves that you could trace. 
you could go and get uh, some leaves out of your garden and actually draw around them. Or if you feel like you can do it, you can just freehand sketch them. So as I said, I've just got them jumbled on the page there. If you want to put them with a bit more precision, you can. Today I have got my Princeton Elite number eight and I am using a Princeton Select pointed fibre brush in a number eight. Uh, and I might uh, use a liner brush as well. We'll see how we go. So I've actually recently bought a new tin to put all my paints in. So it's all clean and shiny. And I've tried to put them in order. Turns out I need another tin because, as you can see, there's not much in the way of blues in there. But I'm going to be focusing on this section here. So what you really need is some browns, some oranges, a little bit of green and yellow, maybe some coppery colours and things like that. Autumn leaf colours. So let's see how we go. So I'm going to take my size 8 brush and I'm going to work on one leaf at a time because as you can see some of them are overlapping and as I've said in the past with watercolours you want to paint a section if there's two sections that are touching paint one section let it dry before you paint the second section otherwise the colours will bleed in together. So let's work on this leaf. And I'm really glad that uh, a lot of you are enjoying these painting tutorials. And I've seen a lot of your work now, and you guys are killing it. You you guys really um, are getting it. it. They look fabulous. In fact, one lady has said that she's even selling some of hers, so that's amazing. That's great. So get plenty of water on them. And then what you want to do is just randomly select some colours like autumn leaves are. So I'm going to go for a little bit of light green and just drop it in in a section there. Just randomly in another section. Uh, and the idea is once you've dropped it in, try not to touch it again even when you're dropping other colours in, because they'll bleed together. Now I'm going to go for a nice bright orangey colour. So let's get a bit of that in there. Just a little bit up there. And it'll do its own thing. That's pretty bright, that orange. That's okay. And I'm going to get a little bit of brown. A nice coppery brown colour. Put a little bit in there. Like I said, don't, don't push them around too much. Just let them do their own thing. And as they dry, they will look really nice blending in together. Put a little bit more down here. And you can just play around with it, whatever colours you fancy. I'm going to go for maybe a little bit more of a darker green. Just dropping it in. And this would be a great activity for kids. I know that when we were kids, Mum used to get us to go out into the garden and we'd collect autumn leaves she'd make a big display in our we had a long passageway and she'd hang up a a drawn out cut out of a tree and we used to collect leaves from the garden and put them on the tree so the, the last thing I'm going to put on this one is a little bit of a yellowy colour just to blend some of the bits together and it won't look much initially, but once it all dries down, it'll look really nice. 
and you can do them different colors. So let's work on this one here. So as I said before, just get a good amount of water on him. And then you can go to town with whatever colors you are inspired by. I mean, you don't even have to do these autumn leaf colors. You could do them rainbow colors if you wanted to. I'm just painting around the edge of that. Once you've got the images on your paper, you can really do whatever you like. Let's go for a bit of a brownie colour on this one. This one's been hanging around a bit longer. It's lost more of its pretty colours. And years ago, we used to have a farm and I lined our driveway with claret ash so that we could have some lovely autumn leaves. I'm going to even put a bit of purple on this one to blend in with the brown. Such a pretty time of year before it gets real cold. A bit of purple and let's try a little bit of a goldy colour. Like I said, you can really do these whatever you like whatever colors you've got even I mean I've, I'm using pre-mix like these are already made up but if you haven't got these colors you can mix colors together to create your own let's put a tiny bit of green in there just a little bit a hint that it was green once not long ago okay that's two so I'm going to keep going with these you keep going with yours as well uh, until you get them all painted in. And once they're dry, I'll come back and we'll do the next bit. But as I said, you don't have to put them all over the page like this. You might just want to choose two leaves or one, even one great big leaf and just put him right in the center. But uh, as I said, I will keep going with this and I'll be back when I finish painting them all in. All right, so I'm back and this is now, well, I will say it's touch dry. It's, it's still slightly damp, but not transferring paint. And as you can see, I've filled in all the flowers and I, uh, the leaves and I've just gone in with a random selection of autumn -y colours. And now I'm grabbing my fine liner pen, so just a thin black pen. And I don't want to create harsh lines, so I'm going to be kind of scribbling um, uneven sort of lines around the edges of these uh, so you'll see what I mean I'm just going to hopefully my pen is working yep trying to hold it back because the edges of leaves are not even so don't try and be too particular and I'm just randomly going around lifting my pen in spots so that it doesn't even join exactly to give it that line and you can if you want to um, just put a fine vein line up the center of them uh, I'm not going to put the lines out to the edge because I think if you look at an autumn leaf sometimes they disappear as they get older those things so now I'm just going to do each one of these leaves with a very jagged and if you are having trouble achieving that hold your pen a little bit further back which gives you less control and will achieve a little bit more of a random look so this one hasn't got a stem on it so I'm just going to draw one like I said just very free hand to give it that not too overthought look about it 
It's just a free form thing to give it a natural look. And I'm just going to go around each one of these and hopefully you're happy with how your leaves have turned out at this point. That leaf there overlaps, so just skip that bit. And just a fine line up the centre. Forgot to do one there. He can have one. And just work, work your way around all your leaves. Keeping the gaps where they overlap. Like I said, I quite like autumn. I don't like winter very much, but I do like autumn. I like the colours of all the autumn leaves. Although in Queensland, we don't get a lot of autumn leaves. They don't change colours like they used to. We used to live in Mervu North, in Gippsland, in Victoria, Australia, for those people that aren't in Australia. And it was very cold there in winter and autumn. And I think that's what the autumn trees need, is that cold weather for the leaves to turn. So we don't get a lot of autumn-y colours up here in Queensland. So I'm just going to go around all of these. And once I've done this... I'm thinking about adding a bit of splatter. Surprise, surprise. And I think it would look good with some... If you've got some gold paint, some gold watercolours, it would look good with the gold speckles, I think, and a bit of dark brown. But uh, these would make nice cards, as I've said before, or a little... Um, put it in a little picture frame on your desk for autumn. I'll just say I didn't end up using this uh, brush. I only used my eight. So you really don't need the two brushes at all. Although, oh no, there's my big thick brush. I've got my big thick brush, which I like to use for my splatter. So getting a bit of water on. I haven't got uh, a messy bit on this tray yet to dabble into, so I'll have to create it. And after saying gold, I'm going into the browns. So <laughs> apparently we're going to do some brown speckles as well. So I'll just do a little light speckling of the browns. And all I do is I get a fair amount of water on that with a very diluted um, quantity of paint and then just tap it around. And now I'm going to go in with the goldy colours. Uh, I've got my favourite gold, and I do not know where I bought it from. And I keep buying gold paints in the hope that I can match it. But this is my favourite gold, and I haven't been able to match it. I've bought other gold paints, but this is my favourite. And a little bit of gold splatter because why not? And there we go. Some autumn leaves for autumn. Okay, so once you've got your gold splatter on, you can let it dry off a little bit and remove your outside edging. And I always like to put the edging on because I think that when you peel it off, it just gives it that really professional look. And I will say that since you guys have been saying you've been having trouble with your masking tape, I've started having trouble with my masking tape a little bit too. So I don't know, maybe it's the the temperature or something. But uh, my masking tape has stuck a little bit. There we go. So that's off. And as usual, guys, don't forget to sign and date your work so find a nice little spot put your signature and the date so we are looking at the 29th the 29th of the fourth for me and that's it 
I hope you enjoyed that, guys, and I hope that you're happy with how your autumn leaves have turned out. So good luck with that, and happy painting! Thank you.